In this video we're going to talk about functional and non-functional requirements which you're writing as part of your SRS which is your software requirement specification and this is part of the analysis phase of your project. So there is often confusion between functional and non-functional requirements so I'm going to start you off with an analogy. Uh, a functional requirement of my push bike is that it can travel on a smooth surface um, and that's probably its functional requirement. Uh, another functional requirement could be that it can carry luggage um, and another functional requirement might be that it can go at variable speeds and another one might be that it can brake when needed. Um, so now let's talk about some non-functional requirements. So some non-functional requirements at a trivial level it might be that the paint is white. Uh, it might be that it uses a particular brand of tyre because the way to think about um, non-functional requirements is that they are attributes of it, they're just not things that it does. So we might say, well, a function is that you can change gears, and a non-functional requirement is that it have seven gears. Uh, a non-functional requirement could be that it'll carry 150 kilos. Uh, now that is something it can do, but um, how much it can do of it is a non-functional requirement. So if we're looking, for example, now at a software example, so if we're looking at McBuckle, which is my um, share trading game, a functional requirement could be that users can purchase shares listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So that's something you can do. Users can trade on this platform when the platform, when the um, New York Exchange is not open. That's something you can do, and then there's the implication of something you can't do. So we might say, also say as a functional requirement, users are prevented from trading when the real exchange is open. We might also say that users can see the total value of their shares. Uh, so these are all things that the platform actually does. Now, here are some things that we might want to consider all of these things which are non-functional requirements. So any usability that we have, um, you know, that it can be used by people with sight impairment or with hearing impairment or, you know, that it can, you know, it can be accessible and so forth. This is important. Of course it's important but it's not a function of it, it's just something that we want to be true about it. Reliability. How often will it be up? You know, will it be up 90% of the time? 95, 99. Uh, this is not something that it does. It's like, you know, I want my bike on the road, you know, 360 days a year. Well, that's not changing the fact that you get on and ride it. It's just how often it's available. Uh, portability is about whether it can be changed, transferred easily to another system. And that might have impacts on what you coded in. You know, you might need to code it in something that can be used across these different systems if you've got that portability requirement. It's just not a functional requirement. It doesn't change what the program does. It just changes what the program runs on. Uh, then we've got robustness in terms of how fault tolerant it is, and that connects with the idea of validation. Uh, now, you obviously, well, not obviously, but I think you're going to want your program to be pretty fault tolerant at all times, but you don't need to specify that, that it will have error messages and, and so forth. And finally, maintainability, how much time. So for instance, my latest version of McBuckle actually adjusts when the trading hours are, depending on what the time is in New York, so that when the time zones change, the program doesn't need somebody to intervene and um, change settings in the, com in the actual program. And so that's to do with having a smaller maintainability footprint. So um, finally, a couple of non-functional requirements for McBuckle would be that trades um, must be um, are completed within two seconds of being placed. Um, the speed at which something runs, you know, again, back to the bicycle, the requirement is that it travels. Uh, not that it travels, if it travels at a particular speed, then that's a non-functional requirement. The function is the traveling. The speed is non-functional. Uh, and finally, the game will play in Chrome and Safari and Edge. Uh, all of these are non-functional requirements. They're important. Now, just before I go, I do want to talk about a common misconception, and I noticed this when I worked in software development, and I notice this now, is that people think that functional and non-functional are code for unimportant and important, or important and unimportant, and they're not. Functional is really important, you need to know that when you're coding, and the non-functional is really important, you need to know that when you're coding. Where we just put them under those different headings, but they're both important and they both needed to be they both need to be written in a way that is unequivocal and hard to misunderstand. So you don't want to it will have a good response time. Well, that's very debatable what a good response time is. 
you know, it will work on most browsers. Well, what are most browsers? So it is certainly, if you're being asked to comment on what's what, remember, is it something that it does versus something that it is? And also look for ambiguity, see if it is at all clear. And is it testable is often the thing. Can I actually say, well, can I test that it runs on Safari? Well, sure, we can run usability tests on Safari. Can I objectively test it runs on most browsers? Well, it depends on what you mean by most. So I hope that's useful to you.